Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to grow a small to medium sized Monstera into something like this. This one recently put out just an absolutely massive leaf. It has these secondary fenestrations. It is big, it is beautiful, and I know this is what we all strive for when we grow these plants. Now over the years I've done some things right, clearly because this plant or this leaf has reached maturity, but there's been definitely some things that I, I don't want to say I've done wrong, but maybe that I could have done maybe slightly better just to help the plant reach maturity a little bit faster. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. So let's get started. I have a few different varieties. I have two Tycon constellations that are just smaller plants. I have a small little elbow plus a couple of these just regular monsteras. So I'll be breaking down the specific care for these plants in the second half of this video. But for the first part, I wanna talk about setting these plants up for success. I guess you can call this tip number one, but often you see people online asking why their plant isn't doing well. Um, it might have droopy leaves. The uh, leaves themselves might be uh, turning yellow or have yellow spots. The tips or edges might be turning brown. It just isn't looking good or thriving anymore. And most times you will see people responding with that it looks to be overwatered. Now it might be showing signs of being overwatered or having root rot, but I find in most times that the reason why it is showing these signs is that it is not receiving enough light. Now you might be doing everything right, like waiting until the soil is dry, but if the plant isn't receiving enough light, then it's not able to use that water fast enough when photosynthesizing. So it's just gonna stay wet for too long, uh, leading to those root rot situations. So don't do that and don't walk into your plants tipping them over. Now the next uh, tip I guess is uh, tip number two, staking your monstera plants. So adding a support system to your plants so that it can grow up. Uh, basically you are trying to replicate how they grow in their natural habitat. They will start off obviously on the forest floor. They will latch onto a tree and they will grow up a tree trunk with each new leaf sizing up. Um, as it grows up its support system. Um, and yes, there is a front and a back to your Monstera. So just making sure that you stake it properly and stake it early when they are young plants like this. It'll help um, achieve those larger leaves uh, much faster. Here is um, uh, one of my ties. This is the second one. And uh, I'm just gonna remove this here. These are a little beneficial bug packs right now. Um, so you can see it's a fairly small plant. It's a fairly small stem, um, but the front and the back is determined by the aerial roots. You can see there's a root right here, and you can see right back there, there's a small little area root that is becoming uh, in contact with the board. So the aerial roots will be at the back of the plant. The majority of the leaf petiole will be facing the front. So you can see um, this right here is the petiole and the majority of where it attaches to the stem is facing the front. Don't worry about if the leaf is facing backwards, they just face whatever uh, direction that the light source is in. So just make sure that you look at the stem, look at the aerial roots, um, have the aerial roots at the back, so in contact with the wood plank. And you can see that's the case with this one here as well. There is some uh, chunky aerial roots. Um, it doesn't need a support system anymore. I'm just gonna take that off and you can see it didn't move when I removed it. This aerial root is in contact and adhered to the board. Each uh, aerial root is alternating just like the leaf. So you can see there's a leaf on this side of the stem. On the opposite side, there will be an aerial root and it will do the same. So here's uh, a, a leaf petiole and then here's the aerial root for that node. So you'll have a leaf and an aerial root kind of opposite to each other. Here's the majority of the leaf petiole um, facing the front of the stem. So this is the front. Aerial roots are at the back, so that's at the back. So that's how you properly support or stake up a Monstera. 
If you don't add a support pole, you'll probably notice that um, when you buy the plant from the store, the stem is basically la uh, laying on the soil. It'll just continue to creep along like that. It might size up, but you're not gonna get the uh, quick upsizing of leaves if you don't add a support system. Um, a wood plank, a nice thick wood plank is sufficient, but you can also use moss poles. But the problem with that is you just have to obviously keep them moist so that the, uh, the roots that are in the moss can obtain moisture and nutrients and uh, not dry out. So um, a wood support system or a log, whatever it is that you like, um, that is sufficient for supporting a Monstera. So those are the two big changes that I made with this plant. I've added uh, extra grow lights, so I use a combination of the mother plant spectrum. I use the uh, gooseneck Sansi grow lights and the um, Soltec Vita grow bulb. And then up top here, I have the Soltec Highland track system. Um, so yeah, it obviously appreciates the extra light. And then I do have it on a support stake as well. Let's see if I can get back here. Um, it is slightly veering off to the left, so I'm going to have to correct that. Um, I may have to add a, uh, another support um, just beside the current um, wood stake. I just moved a couple plants out of the way, but I just want to show the difference in the stem thickness as it grows up the support system. So you can see it's quite thin, and then as it grows up, you can see just how thick and beefy um, that stem is up there and you can see the aerial roots that are growing down into the pot as well. So this is the setup that I have for this one right now and you can see like I said it's veering off to the side a little bit so this is a little more of a zoomed out picture but um, just look at the uh, thickness uh, between the top of the stem uh, compared to uh, what's in the pot. I bought this plant in 2018 or 2019, so it's about four or five years old, and I bought it from a big box store, and it came with multiple stems in one pot. Now, as it started to grow, it uh, quickly became out of control, and at the time, I thought the way to control that craziness of the plant was to chop it up and propagate it. So I guess the mistake, or the first mistake that I made, was chopping it up instead of separating those individual stems and potting them up separately so that they can uh, grow in a more controlled um, setting, I guess, or way. When I did chop and prop, uh, I would have to obviously propagate it in water or soil. So that obviously slows down the process of getting larger leaves. Uh, basically, the plant uses all its energy and resources in developing roots instead of developing leaves. So um, it uh, kind of set the growth back quite a bit. So I should have separated it uh, initially instead of chopping it up and propagating it. Um, that was just the way I thought at the time that the plant was gonna get larger leaves. Now at some point I will have to uh, do a chop and prop with this one as it outgrows the space or as it continues to grow. I just can't let it uh, get larger and larger forever. Obviously I have to control its size at some point. Uh, next time when I do chop the stem, I am going to be doing an air layering method. Now if you're looking for a good uh, video on this, I'll have to make one um, uh, explaining the air layering process with a Monstera. But if you're looking for a good video right now, go check out my friend Lee from Kill This Plant. He has a lot of Monstera content and one of his latest videos shows how he air layers a Monstera. So uh, that is the process that I'll be doing uh, next time. I won't uh, be uh, water propagating it as I've seen some of these larger cuttings uh, rot pretty fast. So I will be doing the air layering uh, method or process next time. The last thing I wanna talk about uh, just quickly here before I start talking about the basic care for these plants. Uh, just let them grow and be realistic with the timeline of growth. A plant like this, uh, this Thai constellation, it's a fairly um, juvenile plant. In reality, to get to a size of something like this uh, big beast back here, it's probably gonna take two or three years, if not more, under ideal growing conditions. Now, um, in certain environments, they might grow faster, and in other conditions, they might grow slower. It depends on a number of factors, uh, fertilizer, all that kind of stuff, lighting, humidity, um, there's many different factors. So. Um, it might be different in whatever environment you're growing in, but uh, right now I have mine uh, under grow lights. Uh, the humidity is probably around 40%. Uh, the temperature, I think I have the thermostat set to about 22 degrees and it's fairly consistent. So 
um, yeah, expect them to take a while to grow. So that's just what to expect when you go out and buy these smaller plants. So if you have like a fairly large space that you want filled quickly, then just be realistic. Um, this plant is gonna take some time to grow. So if you want a, a quick, uh, full plant, then unfortunately you're going to have to go buy a more mature plant, which of course costs more money. So a good plant friend of mine sent me a video today on how she saved her office's Monstera plant. It was basically looking super sad. Um, so this is what she did to improve that plant. This is one of my pride and joy plants and it's not even mine. But when I got here to work, it was dying in the bathroom. So this is one of the older leaves. This was one of the older leaves. So I like brought it out here and mount, like put it up on this stick here. And most of the older leaves have died off. It shot out this and this. Those weren't even part of the plant when I first got here. And then this is the newest leaf it just put out um, from when I put it on the stick. So you can kind of see here what I've done. But yeah, um, this one's doing amazing for most of the leaves kind of looking like this and like this when I first got here. Pretty proud of it. So I've pretty much been talking about this through the whole video and that is the importance of light. Sometimes you might see these marketed as low light plants or they can tolerate low light conditions, but that's not necessarily true. They may be able to survive in those uh, lighting conditions, but they're not going to uh, thrive like they would um, in higher light. Now you might be asking yourself, Jeff, how do I know if my plant is getting enough light? Um, just get yourself a, a light meter app um, I like to use the foot candle setting and it will quickly tell you whether your plant is receiving enough light or not. In the ranges of medium light for foot candles, it's typically 250 to about 750. I know this scale um, is different in different parts or you might uh, see something different online, but medium light is around 250 foot candles to around 700. Low light plants um, is in the ranges of between 50 and 250. Highlight plants is anything um, um, like a thousand foot candles or higher. So I'm gonna go around and show you what type of light my plants are getting. You can see this right here is getting 650 foot candles. So that's perfect. Up near these lights, just at the level of the leaf, it's around 800, uh, 700, 800 foot candles. Um, so this is a, a perfect uh, type of light for the Monstera plant. It's right in those ranges of uh, 250. Um, we're almost getting 900 there. So um, basically what I do is I just set it on the leaf and then you can get a rough uh, gauge of how much light your plant is actually receiving. So 600 is perfect. Um, so obviously the closer you get to a light source, the higher the foot candle reading is going to be. These Sansi lights are actually uh, pretty crazy. So within maybe like a foot, you can see it's um, almost 2000 foot candles. So these little bulbs are actually quite powerful. Although some of these lights can be quite expensive, um, definitely you get what you pay for. These Sansi uh, gooseneck ones are actually quite affordable. I think they're like $50 or $40 for these uh, three light gooseneck ones. Uh, these light bulbs, again, they're a little bit more pricey, but um, definitely worth the investment. Um, they not only look good, um, like it just fits in with the decor, um, but they actually perform very, very well. Um, you can find cheap options on Amazon, but honestly, I've had uh, three or four of those gooseneck ones in the past, and I no longer have them. They, some of them um, just stopped working. Some of the uh, light bulb uh, connections just broke off like when you move it. So definitely they are cheap for a reason and you get what you pay for. Uh, clearly you can see that all of these lights are uh, performing uh, quite well. And yeah, they, they, all my plants downstairs here do extremely well under grow lights. For watering, I pretty well let mine get bone dry. And sometimes it can be a little bit difficult when you have a larger pot to know if the soil is dry, like at the bottom. 
Um, they always say, you know, if it's dry on the uh, top one to two inches and give it some water. Um, I find that's not um, accurate, especially when you have your plant, like I said, in a larger pot. You can get yourself a moisture meter or if you don't want to uh, spend any money, um, just simply use a bamboo skewer. It's really easy for these larger pots because sometimes those uh, moisture meters, they only go so far down. Um, if you have a bamboo skewer, basically you just stick it all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Uh, let it sit there for a few seconds. If you pull it out and there's any soil sticking to the skewer itself, then it's a little bit damp. It's going to stick to the, um, to the skewer. Sometimes you can actually feel moisture as well. So I just pulled the stick out of this one. You can see maybe a little bit of soil at the very, very bottom of the stick. So this one is pretty well bone dry and it'll be uh, ready for a good thorough watering. Unfortunately, I don't have any plants that need to be repotted right now, but pot size and soil type are very important with these types of plants. You don't want a pot that is too large for the plant size itself just because there's going to be uh, too much soil uh, moisture. Whenever you uh, water it, it just it's going to retain moisture for much longer than if you had it in a smaller pot. Um, the plant won't be able to use or take up that water fast enough or it won't be able to evaporate and then obviously you lead to that root rot situation. So just when you're potting a plant or repotting it, just pick a, a pot that is slightly larger than the root system itself. Soil type, um, as you saw in that watering reenactment, you could see that the water was draining through the soil uh, quite quickly. For most of my aeroids, including my Monsteras, I've been using uh, Very Plants Molly's Aeroid Mix. It's a very well draining mixture. It's got a lot of um, just um, well draining or fast draining ingredients in the bag. I do have discount codes for the soil as well as all these grow lights and stuff um, in the description of this video if you're wanting to go check it out. Um, so that is the soil that I use for these plants and yeah this is an appropriate size pot for this size of plant. So the rest of the care is pretty simple. I just use filtered tap water. It's just a little uh, filtration system that screws onto your tap. Uh, it filters out things like uh, chlorine and other minerals. I do test my water as well. I have a little uh, pH water testing kit. Uh, unfortunately, the water that comes out of my taps is fairly alkaline. Uh, with all tropical plants, including Monsteras, you need a pH of around 5.5 to 6.5. Mine is around eight, so I do use, and I don't have the bottle here, but um, I do use a pH down solution to uh, correctly or to correct the pH in the water. If you have something that is too acidic or too alkaline, it's going to lock out nutrients to your plants. Those roots need a certain pH, and if you have it, like I said, too high or too low, the plant is not going to be able to utilize nutrients. So you can give it all the fertilizer you want, but if you don't have those optimal pH ranges, then it's not going to be able to use those nutrients. So uh, watering with a, a proper pH and even testing your soil is a good um, habit to get into, just making sure that your plant is optimizing all those nutrients. Now for fertilizer, this is what I use for all of my house plants, my uh, tropicals, my succulents, everything. This is Dynagro Foliage Pro. I think it's uh, under a different name now I think Super Thrive took it over but I have the old bottle it is a 936 uh, nitrogen phosphorus potassium um, concentration basically I add a small amount into a container of water uh, mix it up it does have a hydroponics um, um, mixture as well so this can be used for uh, soil and for water um, growth um, my plants love this um, I highly recommend it um, it's kind of difficult to find where I live um, so if someone's in uh, or goes up to Saskatoon, um, then I will ask someone <laughs> to bring me back some fertilizer. Otherwise, it's actually quite expensive on Amazon. Uh, so that is what I use. Uh, for humidity, it can uh, tolerate uh, just regular house uh, conditions or humidity. Right now, mine is at 44% uh, humidity. The temperature is 21 degrees. So. Um, in the winter here in Canada, where I am, the, um, the air is extremely dry. Uh, right now, I am running a humidifier. Um, there's no water in it right now. i got to fill it up. But I like to keep the humidity around 45 to 55. Anything higher, like once you get up into the, like the 60, 70% when you are indoors, if you don't have proper air circulation, then you run into the situations of mold and mildew and all that kind of stuff. So um, if your humidity is high, 
then just make sure you have proper airflow. I do have an oscillating an oscillating fan downstairs here. I just I don't have it on right now because it just provides too much uh, background noise. So that is pretty much it. Um, yeah, I uh, I really can't say there's any other uh, specific things that uh, make them grow faster or anything like that. Um, just kind of the big things, uh, light and a support stake are, are kind of the big things. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps you grow your monster into those big, um, big juicy, juicy leaves. I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching my videos. Take care, everyone. Bye.